We're slowly getting to the point where we are wrapping up the gameplay ability system. At this point, you can practically do whatever you want with it. And there's only a couple of things left to cover. So one of those things is going to be gameplay cues. And we're going to be talking about that today. So what is a gameplay cue? We've talked about gameplay abilities, gameplay effects, gameplay attributes, and a bunch more things. So now a gameplay cue. A gameplay cue is something that you can attach to a gameplay effect. So let's take a look at a new effect that we're going to be making here real quick. And we'll just make that in a blueprint class and we'll make a new gameplay effect. And we'll call this gameplay effect uh, regen. And very simply, we're going to set this duration policy to has duration. And the duration magnitude is going to be five seconds. Then in the modifiers, we'll say our uh, basic attribute dot health. We're going to add to that five HP. Then here in the period is how we define how often we add that 5 HP over this uh, duration. So let's say we want to add this every tenth of a second. So 10 times a second for 5 seconds, we're going to be adding 5 HP. Maybe adding 1 HP, because 5 HP <laughs> seems like quite a lot. So that's 10 HP a second for 5 seconds, total of 50 HP regained through this ability. Now, we've done all of this before. Right, this is nothing new. But what we want to do is during the activation of this, we want to have a regen particle system around us to visually show that we're regenerating health. So what we can do all the way down here in display, we can add a gameplay queue. And there we can open that up. We can use a magnitude attribute. We can set a minimum and a maximum level. We're not going to really care about any of that right now. That's for you to discover on your own. We're just going over the basic idea. And we can set a gameplay queue tag. So we can say uh, a gameplay queue dot healing is a tag that we can make. And now it will look for a gameplay queue that is tagged with this tag and apply it. So we're not even pointing it directly at a asset or at a class or at a whatever. We're just saying, hey, take something with this tag and apply it as a gameplay cue, as a visual indication. This can be either really, really nice or this can annoy the ever living hell out of you. Personally, I don't like this. I would much rather just have a pointer to a specific asset that it applies. That's sadly just not how this works. You do need to do this through tag. So let's make that gameplay queue, shall we? We can just make a gameplay queue through a blueprint class and we can say gameplay queue. And now we have two different options. We have gameplay queue notify static and we have gameplay queue notify actor. So the difference being is that the notify static, if you hover over it, the tools will tell you, this is what you kind of use for things like hit particles. Things that just are a single burst of particles that spawns in and then is dealt with. The gameplay queue notify actor is a actor that spawns in, that is parented to whatever actor the gameplay effect is taking place on. And this can hold a continuous particle system that continuously spawns in particles for as long as it's needed. I will real quickly show you a gameplay notify static and just walk you through it because these are a lot simpler and then we'll go through the gameplay notify actor which is going to be the one that we're going to be using for our healing particles so let's make this static one and call this gameplay queue let's call this jump particles in here we can set our gameplay queue tag uh, we already have made a healing one but let's actually also just make a jumping one so we can add that new tag jump and now that's set to gameplayq.jump. Now, over on the left-hand side here, we have five overridable functions. That being uh, handle gameplay Q on activate, on execute, on remove, and while active. You can use either on active or on execute. Uh, the difference is this is called when a gameplay queue with a duration is first activated, and this is when it is just executing uh, for the first time in general. So we're going to use on execute here and we'll just spawn Niagara system at location. 
is what we're going to be doing uh, for this one. And let's see, do we have any systems in here? We, of course, don't. So we'll have to make one real quick. I just made a system uh, from the confetti burst. Then we're going to hook up uh, this into the parent nodes, actually, as well. That's quite important. And then my target is going to be the target that the gameplay effect is being applied on. So we'll just get actor location for that one and we'll spawn particle at that location. And this is as simple as it is for just spawning in things like, again, this is mostly useful for stuff like hit particles and that kind of stuff. So I made a quick gameplay effect here for jumping. Uh, we're not actually going to modify any of the attributes with this gameplay effect. Uh, you could, of course, you could say, hey, if we jump, we probably want to, I don't know, take some of our stamina away or something like that, some of our mana. But for the sake of just showing you how this works, I'm going to skip over all that and we're just simply going to go into display, gameplay cues, and we want to uh, get a gameplay cue with the tag gameplay cue dot jump to spawn in whenever this gameplay effect is applied. Then we'll go into our gameplay ability for charge jumping, which we made uh, in the last video, I do believe. And then after we start applying the root motion uh, jump force, we'll apply gameplay effect to owner, just to itself, and we'll apply the gameplay effect for jumping. And now if we go back through and we press control once, that starts the charge up for our jump. And if we press it again, we jump and you can see it spawns in those particles that we set to that gameplay queue, which is very, very neat. So this is the way you can do things like, well, jump particles also can be a good thing, especially for things like charge jumps and stuff like that. But what we wanted to do is we wanted to make something that shows that we are regenerating. So let's do that next. So for shits and giggles, I just made a quick little green fountain that we're going to be uh, spawning in and activating and deactivating whenever this becomes relevant. Now, next up, we're going to make that gameplay queue notify actor. And we'll call this uh, gameplay queue actor healing regen. And here we will see we have 24 overridable functions. Uh, which is a lot of things here to do with just actors, because what we're doing here is we're spawning in an actor. So we have the usual actor stuff with begin curse over, destroyed, end play, begin play, all that kind of stuff. And then we also have the handle gameplay queue on active, on execute, on remove, and while active. Very similar to the last one. Now, with this, you can do a lot more than just spawning in a particle system and, and doing whatever you want. You can do anything you want that you could do to an actor here. Uh, for us, that is simply going to be a Niagara particle system component still, but you could add mashes and animations and whatever you want uh, if you really, really wanted to. So let's add in the um, healing particle system here. You can see it spawns in. And then in the override, what we're going to do is we're going to override the on active, which is the function that runs when this activates. And then we're also going to override on remove, which is the function that runs when this gets removed from uh, the specific character that the gameplay effect is applied to. So the gameplay effect itself worries about applying and removing itself from the actor that we're applying it to. And these two functions just say, hey, when I am activated in the first place, I will do something. And then when the gameplay effect that I am linked to is removed from that actor, I will do something else. So the easiest way, of course, to do that is just to drag in our Niagara system here and say, hey, we want to activate you when we get add it and when you get removed on the on remove we want to deactivate now if we go up here to uh, selecting the actor as a whole we have some cleanup stuff to do uh, we can automatically destroy this actor when we remove the gameplay effect so you'll probably want to do this in most cases we can, however, set a destroy delay, because if we're doing something with particles, we can say, hey, we want to deactivate our particle system, but our particles live for like two or three seconds. So we want to wait that long before we actually destroy this actor. So let's wait for three seconds. I think that should be pretty good here. Then 
we're going to make sure in the gameplay queue section here to add in the gameplay queue tag that we uh, gave the gameplay effect to. And in this case, we also want to automatically attach this thing to the owner. This just attaches the transform for the actor that we spawn in to the transform for the actor that we're applying the gameplay effect to. That way, they will move with it. And that is the basic setup of how you uh, can make a gameplay queue for a burst or a gameplay queue for a continuous thing. So let's make a quick gameplay ability here for gameplay ability uh, healing regen. And all this is going to do is it's going to... We probably should commit ability and we should make a gameplay effect that takes down like 50 of our mana in order to start this regen. We're going to skip over all that for the time being. We've gone over that in previous videos. So we'll just apply gameplay effect to owner. And the gameplay effect we're going to be applying will be our regen. It's just going to be that simple for now. Then coming back into our player here, I'm going to add to the array that I've made uh, for the abilities that I grant on begin play. I'm going to add in the ability for healing regen. And we'll just use the left control uh, thing that I've been using for testing purposes. When we press that, we'll uh, try to activate a gameplay ability by class. And we'll try to activate the healing regen. And in the gameplay ability itself, uh, we do want to also uh, end the ability after granting the gameplay effect. And realistically, we probably also want to like play an animation here. And with all that, we probably uh, should make sure that we can't cast this while we're already being regen to begin with. So we want to go into our gameplay effect regen here, going down into our tags. And I think in our granted tags, we want to add in a new status effect which will just be called uh, let's call it specifically regen so that should add the status dot regen when we apply this and i do believe that when we end this effect it will also automatically uh, take this away then in our gameplay ability for the regen uh, applying what we're going to do is in our class defaults we want to check our activation blocked tags and we want to block the activation of this ability if we have the status.regen already active. And of course, we want to end the ability on complete uh, for the animation now that we have a animation. So let's test that out, shall we? We can uh, start up the game here. That's all fine and good. And then we can press the left control and we start the healing ability. And uh, the particle system is parented to us. It'll go for five seconds and then disappear. And then we can do it again. But we can't do it as long as we're healing. So everything that we needed to work for our healing regen spell uh, now straight up just works. And just to show you, I will also uh, print out on every frame now uh, the value of my health. So you can see it's actually going up as well. So it's 100. And you will see if I start doing this, it starts going up to 150 in theory. 151. There's one more HP that we get out of it. And then we get this. And this should now be going up to 200 and two. Of course, you do need to put in some amount of code that prevent you from going through the max value that you have. And that's where these modifiers in gameplay effects tend to start falling a little bit short, because these are very good at just adding and removing things in a very non-intelligent way. But as soon as you start getting into some more complex calculations where you need to like clamp stuff or you need to take in multiple different attributes to calculate one different output, these modifiers don't really cut it anymore so next time we're going to go into the executions where we can make our own custom calculation classes that do exactly that taking in more complex calculation to make stuff like that happen and a very big thank you to all of my patreons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help out supporting the channel there's a link down below in the description to the patreon page and a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier patrons, Sergey Thomas, 